This episode of The Obvious Truth is going to be a little different than what you're used to, a little less of the spiritual topics, and we're mostly going in about the music and the process of the music creation itself. And I messed up Clay's producer's name so many times, I'm so sorry, it's Need Up. I realized that now after the interview, I finally realized that. But it is what it is, so let's get into it. Peace, oh please keep your mind at ease. This is The Obvious Truth, and today we have a special guest. His name is Clay Capture. What's up? What's up, man? And uh, your producer right next to you, what's his name? His name is Nito. What's that? Ne Nito. Nito, cool, cool. Is he your, so he produces all your music? Yeah, his name is Nito, Nito, Nito. Like N E A T U P. Okay, sweet, sweet. Oh, sounds good. Has he been producing like, all your music from the start? Yeah, uh, I just started when I like started making music. Like, I didn't know him and shit, but um, like as time went on, like as I kept like going down my path and stuff, we like met and like, uh, yeah, like we've created a sound now. Like we've been crafting the sound for like a year and a bit. Like ever since I started releasing music, it was like he's been producing every song and engineering every song, and like we've been growing together and shit. Awesome, awesome. That's great. Um, so you're a music artist. Tell us a little about yourself. Uh, I'm from Toronto, or Mississauga, Ontario. That's in Canada. Uh, I've been making music for three years now. Uh, cultivated like a brand new sound, and like we're just trying to push the sound and trying to push the boundaries for music. We get new listeners every day, you know. Mm -hmm. I I saw that you've been making music what since 2017. Is that when you started? Yeah, 2017. Uh, yeah, I was like on that. Um, I was more like boom bap rap type. Oh really? Yeah, that was my style back in the day. Like back in 2017 when I first started, but then like I crafted a different sound and like on my own style and stuff. Oh wow, yeah, it's it's super different now. <laughs> yeah, nah, I was inspired by Joey Badass and stuff. Like that was my shit. Like. That's ah. to, yeah, pro era, like that's it. Okay, uh, got you. That that makes that makes sense because I met you in uh Powers Pleasant, I think, yeah. in Discord, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's dope. Yeah, so pro era basically had a big influence on you starting out making music, right? Yeah, they definitely are. Yeah. Like when I was looking at Joey and stuff, and I was like, yo, this guy. <laughs> he was like 17 at the time when he was his stuff was popping off like his uh mixtape when i seen that i was like bro bro 17 doing this and then he made his own label pro era and like had all his boys on like put everyone on and stuff i'm like bro like that looks like low-key looks like the dream like to be yeah. honest like to put all your boys on and have everyone doing what they love and stuff that's pretty sick mm -hmm. yeah it, um are they your biggest inspirations now too or has uh, it kind of changed a little bit I feel like it's changed a bit, but like, not really in like the business aspect of it. Like, I still look at Joey as like, like a big like business like mentor and stuff like that. But like, bro, he hasn't been dropping music as much and stuff like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they just been. I feel like he hasn't been as focused on the music and stuff. He's been focused on like growing on like other like platforms and stuff like that and other like in other ways. And like, I can respect that. So like, for musical influences now, like I look at like, like I don't even know. Like I'd be looking at like. I low key be looking at old stuff. Like I'd be looking at older music. I'd be looking through my whole playlist of like 1,000, 2,000 songs and like just going through it and listening back to see if anything like stood out to me. Like, oh, like this, this is it. Or like, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like just mm -hmm. trying to bring those like feelings back, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. So who, who, who would you say is like, is there anyone in particular that like stands out among those artists? Mm -hmm. You know, I'd maybe like Chris Brown, Neo, uh, Juice World, definitely X. Mm. Uh, the Killer Roy too, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, okay. So that's who you're listening to and now. Drake, more. And Drake, and Drake, definitely <laughs> Drake. Drake since first inspired. Mm -hmm. Why did you, why, you know, why did you decide to uh, go from boom bap to the other style? It was like, uh, it was in the process of finding like my artistic uh, expression, like the way I artistically express myself. Because when I listen to myself back on the boom bap stuff, like mm -hmm. even with good mixing and even with good like sound stuff and even if I like progress in that, 
feel like that wasn't me per se as a person. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I, I fucked with the style, I fucked with like culture and stuff like that, but I felt like it wasn't me per se as a person. Like I feel like it didn't like it didn't represent me as much as what I'm doing now. As in like I love rap, but I'm I'm more like I like melodic rap, you know what I mean? I like singing and I like I like having that groove that like I don't know that just giving it that the song like that hit feeling like that you just that you love in every song you know what i'm saying like mm. i love that and i also but i also love rap so i try to incorporate the two i try to mix it all together because yeah that's what i love no yeah i feel i mean it's like it, yeah the more music you make i feel like you figure yourself out more and more like every every single time you release something i feel like mm, yeah totally like you you could think you're going down one path like you're like oh artistically i feel like i'm gonna become this and then like two days later you make a song and you're like oh shit like what <laughs> yeah yeah it could change just like if you're just going through something else like kind of emotionally like your vibe just changes a little bit mm. <laughs> yeah i feel that a lot definitely so like what was like the main thing that made you start making music though is it is it just solely like Joey Bass? Like, damn, like he's so far, everything's doing. I'm just gonna pick up the mic and start making music. Was it like that? <laughs> uh, it was um, it was when I graduated. When I graduated, I like took in. I'm like, yo, like, is this what I want to do for the rest of my life, or like, I do I want to do something that I love? Like, I went to college for like three years for civil engineering, and it's like, mm. yeah, that's sick. Like, yeah, I can get a job that makes a lot of money, but like, will I be happy in the end? You know what I'm trying to say? Like, mm-hmm. that's, and low-key, like, I realized that's the end goal, like, a bit later in life. Like, I'm 20, 22 now. I was, like, 20 when I decided, like, oh, shit, like, I'm going to start, like, like, I want to see this happen for myself. You know what I'm saying? And, like, mm-hmm. when I realized that I'm still in school, you know what I'm saying? So I have to, I have to go through that. I have to, like, mm-hmm. follow through with that. But, like, it's after, after that, as soon as I was done, I was, like, yo, this is what I want to do. Like, I'm 100% in. Like, I, I felt like I was just living a life, like, like that everyone would live you know what i'm trying to say like just like, yeah. like everyone would live like i'm not right. i'm not normal i'm not like i'm <laughs> not just the average person i'm not just like someone that's just gonna go with the like flow you know what i'm trying to meet, you say like i'm gonna do what i love and i'm gonna find a way to do that so that's mm-hmm. it, you know? yeah i definitely i definitely feel you there <clears throat> you want to follow your passions your creativity what what's gonna make you the happiest i mm-hmm. totally can get that yeah, yeah. so is that like the reason why you even picked up the mic or like because I, I meant like also like why you picked up the mic decided writing you know writing down the lyrics and you know what I mean like uh I feel like I always had that like love for music and that passion it was like mm-hmm. it was literally a a shower moment when I was like I was hopping in the shower and I literally bro I turned on the <laughs> Kanye West, amazing freestyle, like the instrumental, like the dun, 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 dun. like I put on that instrumental. I'm like, yo, let me see if I could freestyle. Like this was mm-hmm. out of nowhere, and I went into the shower and I impressed myself. Like I actually went in, like at my standards at the time. I was going and going, and I'm like, bro, I've never tried this. I've never done this, and I was going. So then after that, I started like, just to myself, like literally just because of passion, just because of love. Like I couldn't stop. Then like after that point, I was like, okay, now every time I hop in the shower, I'm making like the next beat the next beat the next beat the next beat. <laughs> and then like after that i hop out the shower and i'm starting to like find beats i like and starting to write full songs to them and shit and i'm like okay what am i doing here you know what i'm saying like i'm reciting these songs to my friends and stuff like that and it's just like yo you should record these everyone's saying like yo you should record these songs you should record these songs like what are you saying like you know what i mean like yo, you have so much potential like why aren't these like i want this on my phone and i'm here singing it to them in the car as we <laughs> like right you know, right and it's just like when I seen that, like how many people were like, yo, like actually supportive, you know what I mean? Or like actually like supportive and shit. That's awesome. And already like something that I was like, I'm gonna do this no matter what. But like seeing them people be supportive and stuff like that, like that helped me out. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm gonna do this, you know. Right, right. Yeah. That's it's awesome, especially when you have so people that are supportive of your craft that push you along. That's why it's always so important to have good people around, you know, good people who are gonna who who see your potential who who want to see you succeed because when you when you got people around you that that you know are, could be jealous of you or something like that that could be that could be difficult to even start anything <laughs> yeah True. so do you still do you still freestyle is that something you do on the norm uh not really as much like i could but like 
I'd say like right now, I'd say I was a better freestyler back then. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've become, yeah, I've become more like whatever I put my focus to is like what I start to improve in and stuff like that. And like after I realized like, okay, now we're making songs, we're making tracks, we're making like records, like we're making moments now. It's like, it's almost like now we take the skills that we learned in freestyling and we put it into this. Like, mm-hmm. it's not like, I don't know. I feel like I'm so used to now just like making like records and trying to make moments that like, I almost like lost like I haven't been like staying in touch with like freestyling and like mm. you know what I mean like if I went for like a week right now and like started freestyling again I feel like I'd get back to it but like it's just a matter of like time and a day you know yeah true true no I, I'm on, I'm honestly the same way I feel like I was way better freestyling back then like trying to figure things out <laughs> yeah. now it's like yeah then you you don't even know like you don't even know what's coming next it's just like it's just off the top it feels good to like getting off words that you wouldn't expect yourself to say and something like that that feeling yeah 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 um yeah i was speaking with some uh with some people from the life force the other day my conscious community we had a call and we were talking about juice world and we were just talking about how like he like he would record like whole projects within like 24 to 48 hours because Mm -hmm. He's just, he was so good at freestyling. Yeah, no, he definitely, like, he definitely inspired, like, a lot. Like, when we were, like, um, I made the e- uh, EP with four songs on it. It's called uh, It Never Ends. And he definitely, like, I think that was the time, like, his album dropped around that time. Mm-hmm. And, like, it was just, like, so much, like, remembering Juice World around that time and stuff. Like, we, like, in the studio, like, we just so happened to be freestyling a lot of our stuff, like, a lot of, like, like positioning was like in the studio he had the beat and he was like yo like I have a beat for you you know what I mean and I was like all right and in the studio like that just happened like like on the spot in the moment you know what I mean it's like okay like it was like moments like that like Juice World made me see like oh shit like I can make a record today like I can make a hit record in this session like right now like you know what I mean like right this second but like yeah the of like talent is just insane like six songs like i i don't think i could do that <laughs> yeah it's crazy know, that's crazy it's a lot for real yeah. you gotta be real skilled no, he's hella talented for sure yeah so yeah that got me thinking though like when we were talking about that i'm like maybe i should start freestyling more so i can make songs quicker you know what i'm saying no, 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 I, know, I know what you mean yeah because like sometimes if you're just writing like you you might be thinking for like the perfect word like I, sometimes i'll get stuck i'll be like I need, I need like the most perfect word mm-hmm. and it'll take me like 10 minutes just to figure out one word it's like man if i could have just been amazed like just yeah if you were like sick with the freestyles you could just find that word right away yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, I know what right. you mean. yeah um uh, so, uh, Nito, Nito, right? Is that how? Up, uh, Nito. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so what? How does? How do you guys make a song? Do you just come up with the beat and you're just like, "Yo, you gotta lay something down on this." Like, is that how it usually works? Um, it depends, right? Like, especially because we progress. Like, how we make the music has progressed over time. Mm-hmm. But initially, how it started is I would send him beats, and then he would kind of just write to them, and then we would record whatever he wrote. But now it's probably, it's progressed to like very, like various different methods, right? So one would be he, he can write to like a random YouTube beat and then he'll just like record like a vocal, like in GarageBand on his laptop. Mm-hmm. And then he'll send me the acapella and then I'll just cook the beat underneath his acapella, like a completely new beat. Mm-hmm. And then um, another way that we do it is like, I'll send him maybe like the bass like just some like base idea of some chords and maybe like a little bit of the drums to give him a groove. And then he can like lay down some melodies and then he'll send that to me and then I'll cook the rest of the beat around the melodies. And then sometimes I send send, some still, I send him the full beat, but that writing process is more like, it takes a long, a lot longer now. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like he'll be sending it to me and I'll, I'll look at it, send it to him. He'll change a few things, notch it, whatever the case. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, before it was a lot quicker and now it's like, Nothing gets written under, a f- like, I would say it would be, like, in between, like, a week and, like, three days. Three days to a week. Yeah, I'll be sending him, like, three versions, four versions of a track. And he's like, yeah, no, I like this. I don't like this. And it's just like, all right, let's keep going. Like, sleep on it. You know what I mean? Mm. And then, yo, then there's all the, the mixes and the, oh, yeah. the beats. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a process. Yeah. <laughs> 
you want to have everything perfect. <laughs> so what, you'll, you'll send like one version and you might have like a different verse or something like that or maybe a different hook. Yeah, you might hear like some in, in like version three, he's like, yo, that's the chorus. But like in version one, that's just, I like that verse so much. You have to take out the verse in version three. I feel like it sounds nicer. And I'll put it, and sometimes it will match up, sometimes it won't. When it does, it's like, does it sound nice enough or should we make it better? Mm -hmm. and if it doesn't, then we come up with something new. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. we're so willing to scratch something if it's not it. You know what that's I mean? Good. That's good. Yeah, that's important. This guy can also write like a whole song of just mumbles. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, can you repeat that? This guy can write a whole song of just mumbles. <laughs> yeah, I'll do, yeah, that's how I, I, I'll just... I'll mumble him all the flows so that you can get the whole like track idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, they come out catchy still. <laughs> nah, yeah, I feel that. And that, and then you can like figure you figure out your flows that way, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, f I find that to be a very, a very good technique as well. Yeah. yeah. Flows are important, you know. The melodies are important. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That, that's what that's what gives the impact. That's what. Uh, sorry, you cut out there. Sorry. Yeah, that's what the melodies are important. They portray the emotion and stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Do you guys usually, would you say, like, you usually go with the other versions or you usually go with, like, the first version? It depends. It really depends. Like, sometimes I just hit it, like, right on the head. Like, sometimes I'll just hit it right on the nail. Like, he sends it, I send it back, and we both know, like, yo, this is it. Yeah. But, like, there's other times where it's just, like, okay i'll send it back and he'll say like yo i don't know about this and i'm like yo i was thinking that too mm. and like, once it gets to that point it's like okay can i fix it or can it not be fixed and usually like if i'm at it all day i'll be trying to fix it but if i come to it the next day i'll try to come at it with a whole new perspective like i'll literally like mute all the tracks i made and i'll make a new song you know what i'm saying right. i'll come up with a whole new like thing and be like all right now i'll compare the two which one do i like better and if I still like the first one better, I'll probably be like, okay, we don't like this. And what I came up with wasn't that nice either. Like, scratch this. Even though, like, the beat was probably sick. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? It just wasn't the time. Yeah. You got to let it go. Mm -hmm. nice. It's not even, I don't know. Like, I never, it never was hard for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like for the music, like, trying to get the best sound, like, that's always the main goal. Like, that's always the main thing, no matter what. Like, even if mm -hmm. I fuck with the beat heavy, if I sound better on another beat that I don't like as much and that's the song, then that's the song. You know what I mean? Will you will you go back to the other beat though and maybe write something else to it? Or do you just I'll try, like I'll try. I'm yeah, I'm gonna try uh I'm actually gonna start like releasing like our because uh, we have so many songs. I'm gonna start today actually, I'm gonna start uh, releasing just some unreleased tracks. Like, okay. Mastered. I mean some of them are, some of them aren't, but like yeah, just some unreleased that we're going to come out. Because, like, yo, we, we make a lot of music, and I feel like, yeah, I feel like if people want to listen to it, they can, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's quality music. To, yeah. It's just, like, we just felt like we didn't want to drop it, or, like, it just wasn't yeah. right to put it on all platforms. Right. How many songs do you guys think you have together? Like, Ooh. unreleased, too. Yeah, I haven't even thought about that. i say over 100. Easily. Yeah, <laughs> I say over 100, and it's been a year, so like I'd definitely say over 100. Wow, and yeah. those are like near complete, yeah, like, yeah, probably too complete. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah, that's easily, yeah. easily. I would even say more, yeah, because yeah. yo, like, we'll like finish a few tracks. Well, like, like, there'll be days like earlier, like, uh, or last year, like the middle of the year, we we finished, I remember we finished like four or five tracks in like three weeks i'd say four or five tracks right he was sending me beats and like we were like working it out and it was like four four or five tracks we finished and then and then all of a sudden i come over and we make positioning and i was like yo fuck all those five songs <laughs> like yo we just leveled up you know what i'm saying like yo like, three days later like yeah so we spent that long on five songs it's like yo who cares like this is it you know what i'm saying it's crazy right so so out of all those songs, how do you know, like, what's going to come out next? Like, how do you choose what's going to get released? Um, Yo, it's crazy. We say, we have a saying. It's like, is it it? 
<laughs> like, <laughs> it? And then we just kind of decide, like, is this it? And if it's not, then it's not. And if it, mm-hmm. It's kind of like a feeling, like, I don't know. I don't even know. Yeah, what, yeah it's like, you have to question whether or not you've outdone everything if if the new work has outdone everything in the past yeah. mm. like that's that's like what we do like we don't release something unless we truly feel like we outdid everything we've done this far and if it's not outdone everything in every way then we don't release it mm. and it just it just gets scrapped and that keeps us advancing really really fast to be honest mm-hmm that's good that, yeah that's a great that's a great way of looking at it i think yeah because you're always progressing you're always looking at the best progressed song so i see yeah um man i was i was gonna ask you something else about that but i just forgot um so what what would you guys say is one of clay capture's top songs like favorites all right favorites we'll go with favorites <laughs> um okay personally for me yeah this is definitely gonna be the song coming up next. Yeah, the under the lead. Yeah. Wait, no, we're talking about two different songs. I mean, oh. yeah, we're talking about two different songs. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite song is gonna be the song coming out on the fifth. Like that was low key always my favorite song. Like good guy. Okay, so, well, I was gonna ask something to back to that point. So my bad. I'm gonna go back. Um, when we, when we have that moment, like this is it or this is not it, we usually have we usually have like six tracks we've made. And we're like going mm-hmm. through, like the latest of like the best, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And this is it, this is not it, this is it, this is not it. And like um I lost myself. <laughs> yeah, I lost myself, my bad. Oh, it's all good. You you're good. Where was that? So which one is like one of your favorites of all time? Oh, yeah, my best. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be the one coming out next because we had so we had the six we had the six tracks right, and usually when we have the six tracks, he has one. He's like, "Yo, this one's my favorite," and I'm like, mm-hmm. "This is my favorite," and he'll be like, "No, nah, this is it. <laughs> nah, this is it." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we'll have like six tracks, and like we'll both have a track, and we're like, "Yo, this is it," and there'll be two different tracks. You know what I'm trying to say? And yeah. like. It's funny because like sometimes we'll have tracks like there's a song called Tell Me and me and him both didn't like it. Me and him are like, eh. And mm-hmm. all my fans and stuff are all like, yo, release this track. When's it coming? <laughs> I'm like, bro, we don't even like the song. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's funny how that stuff happens. But like my favorite song, like in the group of songs that we had, uh, my favorite song is a song coming out on the fifth. It's called Thinking Out, Thinking Out Loud. Mm-hmm. His favorite song was Good Guy, though, the song that just came out recently. No, 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 the unreleased song. His favorite right now, though, is a song yeah. that we literally just made. And at the moment, it's called Blaze. But uh, it's it's a dance hall vibe. I'm thinking, okay. I'm thinking of putting it on an EP or maybe having it as a single, but, like, this is a, this is a banger. Like, uh, so your favorite one is also the unreleased one that's coming out uh, no nah, i wouldn't say that like I, I like that we've leveled up to that point because it's definitely like my best work but like thinking out loud is just like i don't even know like that probably, now that i'm thinking about that track in my head though like yeah it hits. like thinking out loud like the one coming out on on the fifth like yo that song like just like i feel like when i did that song like i realized like yo i can I don't even know. It was just the next confidence I got from that song. Like, I can see how it's your favorite too. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. Like okay. What about release tracks? Release tracks. Uh, I have to say, and I know people wouldn't even believe this, but "Sweet Getaway." Okay. Yeah, it's not. It's like it's the first song on the EP. Uh. Nah, I love that song. I was actually really surprised that I even made that song. I can't even lie. Because, like, I listen back to it, and I'm, like, I hear zero, like, like influence from from people. Like, I hear, like, mm. no one that I sound like. I'm, like, yo, this is a sound I've developed. And, like, I don't know. Hearing that is just, like, it's wild to me. It's, like, it's crazy. Like, I listen to it, and I'm just, like, wow, this sounds good, and it sounds like something I've never heard before. And I made it. And it's, like, <laughs> you're feeling, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah I don't know. Yeah. That's when, when I realized... Like, yo, how unique we are type. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That EP drop, that was just, like, a good a good time. So because it felt like the most original song, it mm-hmm. made... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, about for, what about for him? What about for, what about for you, Nia? Oh, like, my favorite release? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I, I think it's good guy. Okay. The one that just dropped. Yeah, the one that just dropped. Yeah, I like that track too. Yeah. I, yeah. I like I like it. It's really good. Honestly. Like vocally, he did like I feel like what he did melodically and vocally, like uh, yeah. I have a very technical way of looking at music. Like I don't really look at music so much like everybody else, right? Like he's gonna go way more off of feeling than I'm going to. Right, like mm. obviously when I'm making a beat, I'm gonna base it off of feeling. But when I'm just judging off of like my favorite record, sometimes I can get too like technical with it, right? Yeah, no, I feel, I feel, yeah. I feel like the like the producers and engineers. I feel like we can be a little more technical sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes I'm even just basing it off of the mix, right? So exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's like I'm always gonna like the latest stuff. It's always gonna be our best work. I think for me, can't relate. Might what might be uh one of my favorites. I just love that hook. It's so yeah. it's so nice. <laughs> you did your thing, bro. We started by uh, Ian Dior song actually, and yo, know, it's crazy how I was just like yo, I was just like yo, I like this idea. Mm, I can hear that. Completely different. Like we're gonna completely like, you know what I'm saying? And like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we wanted that impact to hit as soon as you heard that. Like, I cannot relate. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, did you guys ever end up releasing that song that people said to your fans said to release that song? Did you guys like? Yeah. Ever? yeah. You did? I did, I did it before I took a little break for the uh, for twenty twenty. Like in December, I dropped it. It was called "Tell Me." It did okay. It didn't even do like that crazy like that. But like, mm -hmm. it was for the fans, you know. At least your fans got. It. At least they can bump it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it then, yeah. All right. So now these are gonna be a little more random questions. Um favorite anime or cartoons? Naruto. Hey, me too, bro. That's my favorite, bro. Say word, who's your favorite character? Um, I feel like it's Itachi. Okay. Okay, I see you. What about you? Sasuke. Sasuke? There you go. Yeah. Dude, I love that show. It's so deep. Yeah, trust, yo, trust. It's deep. It's so deep. Like, when, going into that show, I never expected, like, any of that, honestly. I'm saying, oh, my God. I've been trying to tell these guys. I've been yeah. trying to tell all my boys, like, yo, <laughs> watch Naruto. Like, it's not. They're like, yo, it's some, like, cartoon shit. I'm like, bro, you guys don't understand. It's deep. Like, yo, yeah. the story they're telling, like, yo, like you, you'll be mind fucked. Like you'll just be like, "What the fuck's going on?" Like, yeah. Um, you know? Like you'll get entranced in the story. Oh yeah, definitely. Cause like, yeah, it's it's like it's cool because it's really spiritual and it got awesome action. But like, the stories of everyone, like all the characters, like they're so deep. Like all the stories, like, and the amount of emotions that like, they go through, you get to learn about like why they feel certain things, like. Mm -hmm. And their character arcs are incredible, like how they grow. Go so far back. It's crazy. Yeah. You don't miss a detail. Yeah. And like I, I loved like learning about like some of the evil characters and you find out like they're just they're just like damaged. Like they're just they Yeah, just bro. Hurt. It's not even yeah. It's fucked. It's like yo, why is this guy like you don't even take it in because they don't show you like his backstory, you just see what he's doing, and then after you realize like, oh shit, like this is his reason. And then he's like do you sympathize with the bad guy or like yeah <laughs> yeah, crazy. yeah at first you're thinking like oh this guy's this guy's a dick like <laughs> and then you're like oh well he went through or she he or she went through some crazy stuff so <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't know if it justifies it but like you get it you understand it yeah yeah true true um have you ever had a lucid dream I feel like I have had one lucid dream in my life, and ever since I've been wanting to, and I don't know how the fuck to again. <laughs> like, <laughs> like when you have full control of what's going on in the dream. Oh, oh, bro, it was on some like Hunger Games shit. Like I was in my my old apartment, and like I just remember it was Hunger Games. Like it was Hunger Games, but like there was like real weapons, like not like <laughs> bow and arrows and like swords and shit. Like it was like guns and stuff. Oh yeah. And, like, everyone was trying to kill me, but I had full control, and it was weird. Cause like I was scared. Like I'm running through the halls and I had no gun. And then like, like someone pulled up on me and it was like I was gonna die. And then I literally like thought of a gun in my hand and I like it appeared in my hand and I shot him and I killed him. I was like, yo, 
and then I met someone, and then me and him, like, one. It was crazy. It was literally crazy, because I can remember this dream so well, because yeah. I had full control. Like, I literally had full control. Like, I reached down, thought of a gun, and it popped up in my hand. Mm. It was crazy. Like, what is <laughs> no going on? No way. No, no cap. Like, That's I'm not crazy. even joking. It was so crazy. Like, it was like, mm. I, ever since that night, ever since that night, I was literally, like, watching videos how to lucid dream how to lucid dream and i'm like trying and trying and i can't do it i'm like how the hell did i do it then i like yo so much sometimes yeah it can be random yeah i've never had that no it was crazy bro like it was insane do you uh do you have a dream journal or do you meditate i used to i used to actually like keep track of my dreams on my notes and then i was like I was just lost. Like, yo, I was trying to like piece the shit together and I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like mm -hmm. my brain's wild. Like the stuff it would like come out with and I'm like trying to like read the stuff back. And like sometimes it give me like an eerie feeling and I didn't even like write anything that crazy, you yeah. know? What I'm to say? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, whoa. <clears throat> yeah. That's why I stopped looking. <laughs> this shit scares me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Like I low key got a little scared. Like when something like that happens, and I'm reading like normal stuff, and I'm like getting scared. I'm like, why do I feel like this off of a normal dream? You know what I mean? I'm just like, maybe I can track these. Maybe I should just leave them to me in my sleep. So it, the dream would seem normal, but you would kind of get an eerie feeling from it. Is that what you're saying? Like not in the dream, but reading it back. Yeah. Mm. Reading it back is just like, yo, I can't even give you examples right now because like. Nah, yeah, that's fine. But like. Yeah, no, just like, yeah, like something yeah. very regular, like normal, not normal, but like, I don't know, nothing crazy that crazy. Like you know how dreams are like your imagination, anything could happen. Nothing crazy, mm -hmm. like almost realistic. Mm -hmm. And it's like I read it back and I'm like, yo, that's scary. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sometimes things like that, like certain emotions, especially when they're strong, it could be your subconscious trying to give you a message, mm -hmm. something that could be even coming in the future. Or it could be something that you haven't fully dealt with emotionally. So sometimes that that's the case. True. That makes sense. Yeah. I recently had a dream about uh, going to the internet money house and getting signed. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully that can come true. Is that your goal? What are, what are your goals as an artist? Uh, I don't want to be signed to a label that controls like my sound, but like I definitely love to be signed to a label that sees me as like, so, yeah, like the front man kind of like you know what i mean like that's there like pushing my music as much as i want to be pushing it you know what i'm trying to say like that cares mm -hmm. as much as i do because like i care about this shit with all my life you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. I, people around me like he's like that too and i need like more people around me like that for this to go anywhere you know what i'm trying to say yeah, like, that. yeah man because like at least it can go like it can go like it can go different ways like yo i could realistically i can go get signed to a label and like be their puppet or like literally like oh we're gonna want this type of music from you yeah, so yeah. This type of music like right right yeah, but like it's do i want to do i want to continue expressing myself the way i want to and it, it's at the end of the day it's happiness you know what i'm saying like, right right yeah. Yeah, freedom, like, you love freedom. It. like having that freedom yeah exactly right um <clears throat> another random question any uh books you've been reading or any favorite books you got I've literally only read one book in my whole life, and I'll never forget it because it was actually a crazy book. It was called "The Five People You Meet in Heaven," and it was like, yeah, it was a it was an interesting book. Like it was um about this guy. He literally dies at the start of the book, um, and he just starts meeting people. Like he starts seeing people in his lifetime that like meant a lot to him. He's five five people, and like mm -hmm. you don't really know what they're about. And then you start like having conversations. You start understanding this guy's life and stuff like that. I'm like yo that book was good like, that book was really good and i don't even know like i like books like that but like i don't know i'm not promised that experience every single time you know what i'm saying i'm yeah. like putting a, uh like reading a book's a lot of energy you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> yeah true that's why i got audio books though <laughs> uh, no no that's facts that's facts actually yo that's true i just downloaded uh russ's audio book oh dude i was literally just about to tell you that's a good one i just read or listened to <laughs> Oh, that one's sick. That yeah. one's a good one. Audiobooks are cool. Like, I'll be listening to podcasts like 24 7. So, like, if there's a good audiobook, I, like, I wouldn't mind. Like, I don't mind listening to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's what we have, though. Russ. Is, and there's like a, like another one, another one about being an artist and like just tips and strategies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that, that one's definitely powerful. Yeah. His mm -hmm. story and everything he says really 
it's, it's pretty it's pretty good spot on really <laughs> um so any any last messages you have for the audience you and Nito before we sign off uh go stream good guy now <laughs> so now go watch the video um Uh, thinking aloud's coming out on the fifth. And yo, if you guys are fans of Patrick CC, he has a like another channel. Uh, he's dropping videos on. It's called Joe to Create More, and our video is gonna be dropping there. So if anyone wants to see that, it's gonna be dropping on the seventh. Uh, my my Instagram is at Clay Capture, and his Instagram is at underscore Need Up. So N E A T U P. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. Thanks for thanks for being on the podcast. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for having us, bro. Appreciate it. All right. You guys take care. Love, bro. Peace.